Hi, uh, on to the chapter nine lecture. Uh, whether you look at it or not, eh, who knows? But either way, this chapter is probably one of the harder ones to master. I mean, I, you can learn the skills and techniques for uh, Microsoft Project, you know, holding meetings and stuff, but managing the people, managing yourself, uh, leads a lot to the success and failure of a project. Uh, so there's a lot of slides in this. I'll probably not get through them all, but I'll try to touch on some of the key ones. So <laughs> the importance of human resource management, I, I think in most companies, human the people are the most important assets. Yes, there are some manufacturings that have you know, a lot invested in making the device, but it's the people that make the projects work, that order the, the parts, they order the raw materials, that do the manufacturing, the training, uh, are probably the most important things that you'll have to manage as a project manager. Here's some statistics as far as, you know, the ups and times of labor, the workforce. But the key here is if, if you're looking for a career aspiration, um, project management, look at here. You know, the hottest skill in 2015, estimate 15.7 million jobs in the next 10 years. Well, in this case, in 2010 to 2020, and guess what? That Those needs have not diminished. So implementation, you know, implications, uh, you can improve the benefits of people, you know, refining work orders and, you know, work hours and incentives. Uh, potentially finding new employees. <laughs> what, is, what, is, what is human resource management? Basically, it is, <laughs> the process include is, you know, how do I plan it? How do I acquire a project team? How to develop a team? How do I manage it? Uh, are, are some of the keys to this. So managing people, there are, there are psychologists and manager theorists that have been their whole lives been studying how to manage people. Uh, so there's different theories and points of view on how to in, do influence of people and how to use power, how effective, how do you deal with the emotions that in a difficult situation. Um, and basic leadership skills. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you definitely have a couple of different key motivations. There. You've got intrinsic, which is, hey, I want to, I want to participate because they're going to enjoy the project, or uh, extrinsic, they're going to get something out of it, uh, whether it's a reward or a penalty. You know, there, there's a couple of different types of motivation, and there now there's different types of theories. You've got Maslow's hierarchy of needs from you know, physical to self-actualization, uh, Hersberg's motivation uh, theories, uh, uh, McClellan, uh, McGregor, as you can tell, they are all <laughs> ways of motivating people. Now, <laughs> there are ways to influence and help that hurts and helps projects. Um, project more likely to succeed when the project manager can influence with expertise and a challenging work assignment. Uh, projects will fail more likely when we try to rely on authority or money or beat you up when things fail. Uh, those things probably won't work well. Uh, power potentially influence behavior, but there are power, there are different types of power. Um, coercive, legitimate, expert power, reward, referent, uh, all of those things uh, you'll learn about in this chapter. Now, Stephen Covey wrote a book on uh, seven habits to effective people or projects and beginning, you know, you know, be proactive, begin with the end in mind, putting first things first, think win-win, uh, seek first to understand and then be understood, Sing, synergize, sharpen the saw. If you haven't read a book, it's it's probably been out about 25 years, but this book, as far as dealing with projects and teams, very good. Uh, not a bad book to put in your... Oops. Your repertoire, into your... Now, <laughs> project managers, since you're dealing with people 90% of the time, you got to be 
good at listening and build rapport. Um, you want to make sure you're in, in, empathic listener. You want to make sure you're, you're listening, but you're listening with the intent to understand. Because when somebody's telling you something, there's usually either a positive or negative impact on the project, and you need to make sure you understand what that impact is. But of course, before you communicate with them, you have to build a rapport. You got to make sure you got some kind of relationship you, with them. And one of the ways to help do that is mirroring. Um, and, and pretty much is, you know, matching the behavior characteristics of a person as you're listening to them. Um, so it's good skill to try to develop. Now, one of the things the project manager is things don't always go the way you want them to. And it definitely uh, impacts you personally. And it's emotional intelligence is how do I manage my own emotions when things are going haywire? And 71% of the hiring managers says, hey, they want an emotional intelligence more than your intellect. So your, your EQ, emotional quotient is more important than your intelligence quotient. Now, there's definitely no one best way to be a leader. I mean, there's always discussions whether um, are leaders born or made. Uh, several different styles, different way of doing it. But just know that you'll be a pro if you're going to be a uh, project manager, you're going to be put in a leadership role and you just got to decide which ways you're going to play that out. Now, how do I develop a resource plan? Now, it definitely, I got to identify and document all the project roles, who's doing what, and they usually include organizational charts and staffing management plans and responsibility matrix and resource histograms. And basically, a response, responsibility matrix is looking at the work breakdown structure is who's doing what within the organization. You know, your staffing histogram is basically is over time, how am I going to roll people on and roll people off the project? And how many people are going to be on doing different at taking snapshots week by week, month by month, based on the size of your plan? Acquiring a project team, tough to say. Most times I just inherited a team. Uh, sometimes you had, were lucky enough to be able to go out and recruit and hire. Um, but most cards you acquire. But depends on your company you work for. Resource assignment says, hey, you've got to look at the tasks and match up the skill sets for what needs to be done. So you're hiring or assigning people to put the best skills in the most important task, matching dollars and cents and scheduling and availability. All of that's being done. Now, the enrollment of computer science has dropped a lot, but guess what? The amount of needs for IT is important and, and crucial. So you kind of got this, in, in your case, in a perfect storm is there's a lot of need for good IT people and you're coming in at the right time. Now, best practices, basically, you know, just look at what companies are, are best. Google's done pretty well. Working Mothers, you know, Timeline has some other good companies to look at. Um, now, as you lay out a project plan, there's a couple of things you want to do. Is I, you know, there's, you know, what is resource loading? Resource loading is okay. I want to make sure that I match um, the, the resources for the schedules for a particular problem. So you, you're you're writing software. So I need to make sure the design engineer is scheduled for a certain period of time, and I want to over allocate them. I don't want to give them too many projects or uh, work them more than 40 hours a week, whatever the case may be. Uh, so you got to watch that leveling or loading, in this case leveling, is I want to make sure that I've, I've just kind of extended the tasks. I've only got one engineer or one designer and he can only work so many hours. So instead of working 80 hours in one week, I got to spread it over two and have 40 hours each week. So it's understanding how are you going to level, smooth that allocation? Do I fully allocate them? Do I give them a 20% buffer? So when they make an estimates of two weeks, it's actually going to take longer than two weeks because it's two weeks of effort. But then you take out this 20% overhead uh, 
water cooler talk, project meetings, and stuff like that, um, all come into play that when you're scheduling these these people out. Benefits. It just requires less managing your part, improved morale because they're not overworking. So as you're building your team, you're trying to get people to work together more effectively. Uh, some theory off the Tuckman models is, you know, the five keys he's, you know, project team is forming and storming and norming and performing and joining. You know, so it's basically when I'm forming the team, there's always going to be some rough spots. After the rough spots, they start getting into a normalization. They start finding out how they're going to work together, how they play with each other. And then once they get through that, then they start really hitting their stride and start working together, performing at high levels of performance. And then how do I roll off the project? Now, training. You need to make sure you understand what are the trains. Sometimes you got to train in team building. Uh, there's some tools out there, and one of your homework assignments is going to do something like this, the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Uh, what personality are you? What kind of, uh, how do you deal with people? Are you an extrovert, introvert? Uh, are you intuitive? Are you, do you more thinking or feeling? So you're going to, one of your homework assignments is figure out where you are in this place. Uh, but there's other theories out there. you got different social styles, you know, you're a driver, expressive, analytic, amiable, um, this profile, you know. So there are several different personality tests that, and I'm just going to give you one to do. Um, but one of the things is, okay, how do I reward my team? How do I recognize them? Um, sometimes you don't always can't do it with money, so it has to be with other things. So you need to look at how do you recognize your team? When you're managing a project team, you've got to assess the performance, yeah, looking at the information that you've been given. You must decide, yeah, are, are the changes need to be changed to the project? Are we things going on that is need to be corrected or prevented in the future? Uh, do we need to make updates to the project plan? You know, if things are going on and we lost a person. <clears throat> Some of the tools and techniques for managing project teams, observation, uh, performance evaluation, interpersonal skills, conflict management skills, um, how to deal with conflict. There's several different ways of dealing with conflict from confrontational in your face to I'm, I'm running away, I'm withdrawing. Uh, so different ways of handling conflict. Now, conflict can be good, uh, just making sure you can deal with it and everybody comes to the same page when it's all said and done. Now, there are some disadvantages of a dysfunctional team and they don't, they're at, they don't trust each other. They're, they're afraid of conflict. They don't want to commit to anything. They, they don't want to be accountable to anything. Uh, so some of that stuff. So when you're dealing with a team, things you want to do is be patient, you know, f fix the problem, not the people. I mean, establish regular meetings, make sure those meetings are effective, not time-wasting materials. I want to allow that uh, time for the teams to kind of go through those building stages. Uh, limit the size of the teams. Don't make them too big because you get large groups together. Sometimes they don't want to talk. Uh, social activities. Uh, make sure the, the team identifies its stress. Nurture the teams. Help them uh, when they're having troubles. Uh, and then take, you may have to take additional actions based on virtual teams if they're not located. So now you get, there's definitely software out there to help you with some of this. Um, but I think it ends up being more of a personal, you know, you've got to treat people and consider them with respect. You've got to understand what motivates them, communicate with them. And those are probably some of the biggest ways you're going to manage a successful team. So I hope this helps. You'll understand a little bit about uh, human resource management and project management. And uh, I'll talk to you next week.